guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and I'm here with Henry. Hello. And we want to wish everybody a very happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Happy 2022. We hope 2022 is very healthy, safe, happy, and prosperous for everyone, right? Yes. For all our subscribers. And today is our next Vice Presidential Series installment. Yeah, we're back from our break, our Christmas and New Year's break. We're back with our next Vice President, and he's what number, Henry? The 19th Vice President of the United States, William A. Wheeler. Jeez, he just rattled that off. The 19th Vice President of the United States, the man behind us, William A. Wheeler. We got some cool things to tell you about William Wheeler, but first, William blah, 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 right? <laughs> it's a tongue twister sometimes. But first, before we get into William Wheeler, 19th Vice President, Henry, what do the people need to do? Hit subscribe down below, leave all your comments, questions, drop a thumbs up, and give a like. That's right. Hit subscribe down below, give us thumbs up, leave those likes, comments and questions. We love them, right? We love yes. the comments and questions. Make sure you give us those comments and questions, and then hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we do release a new video. Henry, when is it? Every week. Every single week. Just, you know, in case you guys forgot, we got to yes. remind them, right? It's been a, exactly. it's been a little while. Yeah. So here we go, next Vice Presidential Series installment. Sit back and relax, because we're going to take a look at William Wheeler, and this is Dead History. Dead History. Hey guys, TJ back with you, here with Henry. Hello. Happy New Year again. Yes. And here we go, the guy behind us. Who is this guy, Henry? Will, William A. Wheeler. You're right. And what number vice president? The 19th. The 19th vice president of the United States, William A. Wheeler. And he was the vice president under who? Rutherford B. Hayes. You got it. Rutherford B. Hayes. Good job. Yes, Rutherford B. Hayes' vice president, William A. Wheeler. Probably one of the most obscure vice presidential picks in the history of our country. And maybe one of the most obscure vice presidents in the history of our country. Some cool things to tell you about William A. Wheeler. He is from a town called Malone, New York, and it's what, Henry? Way up there, right? You don't know. You weren't there. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. But yeah. it is so far in upstate New York that literally when you're there, there are signs on the side of the road that say Montreal, like 30 miles. Yeah. Well, that's it, how, it, isn't it the one near Canada? It's, well, yeah, right near the Canadian border. It is that close to the Canadian border and only like 30 or so miles from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So really cool stuff. He's way up there. Malone, New York. Another really cool thing about William A. Wheeler, he was probably one of the most honest politicians in the history of our country. This man w had morals coming out of his ears. He was such a moral and ethical guy, a really, really smart and good guy, truly, sincerely an honest politician, literally listened to everyone from both sides of the uh, line. He, he wanted to know what the issues were. He listened and he listened and then he made decisions. Really intelligent, really good guy. A man who also was big on civil rights, really big on civil rights. We're going to get into all these really cool things about William Almond Wheeler. But first, before we do that, you did the subscribes, you did the likes, comments, questions, you did all that stuff. Henry, they, what do they gotta go get, dude? We got the potato chips, the soda, the popcorn, the pretzels. Yep, yeah, maybe you got some Halloween candy left over from your stocking or something, some yeah. Reese's trees, whatever it is, go get it. Get ready, get those snacks. Go enjoy the fireworks. The fireworks, fireworks? Well, you mean Happy New Year fireworks? Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. So there you go. So here we go. Our first edition in 2022, looking at the 19th Vice President of the United States, William A. Wheeler. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. And enjoy. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. TJ here with Dead History, and I welcome everyone back to our next Vice Presidential Series installment as we are taking a look at the 19th Vice President of the United States, William A. Wheeler. Uh, I am flying solo, of course. Henry's not with me for the audio portion of this. 
Uh, I do want to wish everyone a very, very happy new year. Uh, I wish everyone a very happy, safe, healthy, and prosperous 2022. Um, just so everyone kind of has an update on myself, um, I have had a lot happen over the last two to three weeks since I've really uh, done one of these videos. Uh, obviously, the holidays took place. Uh, we have had a recent COVID scare. Uh, Henry's mom and brothers looks like they, uh, they all had COVID. Uh, Henry, uh, has tested negative. Uh, so Henry has not had COVID. Um, and myself, I do not believe I've had COVID, but I am not sure to be honest. Um, I am vaccinated and boosted. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm all, all good as well. So, uh, that's kind of what's been going on the last couple of weeks. Uh, I also am about to embark and start a new job, uh, a new position. Uh, so that's going on. Um, just a lot happening uh, with me. So, uh, you know, I'm very excited to be back doing these vice presidential videos for you guys. Um, and yeah, uh, before we jump right in, I just wanted to let you guys know couple uh, quick housekeeping um you know i just kind of gave you the update on on things happening over here and you know basically we have about roughly 17 vice presidents left in this vice presidential series so i think as long as we don't take any more time off if we do it every single week uh consecutively we should uh, be doing this until about the very end of April. So this vice presidential series will go till probably late April, early May. Uh, and then after that, there's going to be a very, very fun, special vice presidential gravesite grading video that we're going to do a live stream video. We're going to tell you all about that as time gets closer. Um, and who knows, you know, definitely maybe a live stream or two over the next few months as well. Uh, obviously, I'll keep you uh, up to date about all that when, when things are going to happen. So, here we go. Let's jump right in uh, to take a look at our 19th Vice President of the United States, William A. Wheeler. William A. Wheeler. Who is Wheeler? Rutherford B. Hayes. In the wake of the Grant-era scandals, both the Republican and Democratic parties searched for untarnished candidates as they approached the presidential election of 1876. Democrats chose one of their most prominent leaders, New York Governor Samuel J. Tilden, who had won national attention by taking on the Tweed Ring in New York City. Republicans passed over their party's bigger names, men who had been stained by various exposés in the press, and settled instead on a ticket of Ohio Governor Rutherford B. Hayes and New York Representative William A. Wheeler. Although neither man was very well known to the nation, both had reputations for scrupulous honesty and independence. If history remembers William Wheeler at all, it is for his character. In his introduction to John F. Kennedy's Profiles in Courage, the historian Alan Nevins reproduced a colloquy between Wheeler and Senator Roscoe Conklin, the Republican political boss of New York. Wheeler, if you will act with us, there is nothing in the gift of the state of New York to which you may not reasonably aspire, Conkling tempted, to which Wheeler replied, Mr. Conkling, there is nothing in the gift of the state of New York which will compensate me for the forfeiture of my self-respect. A cautious politician. Among the stranger individuals to occupy the vice presidency, William Allman Wheeler seems to have been scarred by his father's ill health, which left him neurotically obsessed with his own well-being. 
an excessively cautious politician to the point of timidity. He straddled the various factions in his party, avoided all commitments, and advanced himself politically while covering himself with obscurity. William Wheeler was born on June 30th of 1819 in the upstate New York town of Malone, near the Canadian border. His father, Alman Wheeler, who had attended the University of Vermont and was a promising young attorney and local postmaster who died at the age of 37 when William was just eight years old. Left in debt, his mother Eliza took in boarders from the nearby Franklin Academy to support her two children. William attended the academy, farmed, and did whatever he could to save money for college. At 19, with the help of a loan from a friend, he entered the University of Vermont in Burlington. There he studied for two years, at times living on bread and water, until an affection of the eyes caused him to drop out. He returned to Malone, taught school and studied law. In 1845, shortly after he was admitted to the bar, he married one of his former students, Mary King. A Whig, Wheeler was soon running for office. He became town clerk, school commissioner, and school inspector. In later years, he recalled that the $30 a year he earned as town clerk, recording deeds and laying out roads, were of more value to me than the thousands I have since attained. He served as district attorney for Franklin County from 1846 to 1849, and from 1850 to 1851 served in the State Assembly, where he chaired the Ways and Means Committee. Joining the new Republican Party, he moved to the State Senate in 1858 and was elected its president pro tempore. Wheeler also conducted a private law practice until throat trouble interfered with his courtroom advocacy and convinced him to abandon the law in favor of running a local bank and serving as a railroad trustee, positions that he held until driven from business in 1865 by broken health. A silent member of the House. Wheeler was elected to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1861 to 1863. He then returned to New York, where he chaired the State Constitutional Convention, a prestigious body whose members included two future presidential candidates, Horace Greeley and Samuel J. Tilden. Although Wheeler spoke infrequently, his words carried weight and he gained high marks for fairness as presiding officer. In 1868, he again won election to the House where he chaired the Committee on Pacific Railroads. It was at this time that Iowa Representative Oakes Ames, acting as an agent for the Credit Mobiere, the construction company for the Union Pacific Railroad, began spreading railroad stock among high-ranking members of Congress where it would do the most good. Wheeler not only refused all stocks offered to him, but resigned his chairmanship to avoid further temptation. In 1872, when the Credit Mobier scandal broke in the newspapers, Wheeler remained clean as some of the most prominent members of Congress were caught with the stock. His rectitude even inspired him to oppose an appropriation to construct a post office in his hometown of Malone. Wheeler stayed aloof from the New York State political machine run by Senator Roscoe Conklin. In 1872, Conklin maneuvered to make Wheeler Speaker of the House in place of his hated rival, James G. Blaine. Wheeler declined to have anything to do with the scheme and supported Blaine, who apparently had promised, but never delivered on the promise, to make Wheeler chairman of the House Appropriations Committee. 
Wheeler also cited his poor health as a reason for not putting himself forward and only the persuasiveness of his wife and friends kept him from retiring from Congress. In the House, William Wheeler generally kept silent unless he was managing a bill, but then he always proved to be well-prepared and highly effective. He remained in the political shadows until 1874 when as a member of the House Committee on Southern Affairs, he investigated a disputed election in Louisiana. The election of 1872 had torn apart the Republican Party in the state with half of the party machinery supporting William Pitt Kellogg for governor and the other half joining the Democrats on a fusion ticket. The election board declared the Democratic candidates the vi victors, but Republicans refused to concede. They created their own election board, which gave the governorship to Kellogg and a number of disputed elections to their candidates for the state legislature. After President Grant recognized Kellogg as governor, a battle erupted on the streets of New Orleans that left 56 people dead. A mob ousted Kellogg, but federal troops restored him to office. The Wheeler Compromise. Traveling to Louisiana, William Wheeler and other committee members heard highly emotional and contradictory testimony from both sides. It was Wheeler who forged the compromise that let Kellogg remain as governor and allowed the committee to arbitrate the disputed seats in the legislature, most of which went to the Democrats. In March of 1875, the House endorsed the Wheeler Compromise, a plan which essentially undid federal reconstruction of the state and held out hope for peace between the North and South a decade after the Civil War had ended. When Louisiana Democrats violated the spirit of the compromise by unseating even more Republican state legislators in order to elect a Democrat to the U.S. Senate, most Northern politicians and newspapers ignored the violations. The North seemed relieved to escape the responsibilities of Reconstruction. Representative Wheeler observed that Northerners had expected too much from the South and declared that it was time to admit the failure of efforts to promote peace with the sword. His compromise taught Northern Republicans how to cut their losses. Thereafter, the party concentrated on preserving its power in the North while scaling down its military efforts in the South even if that meant abandoning the political rights of the freed men. Wheeler was content in his life as a member of the House of Representatives and dreamed of becoming Speaker. However, in early 1876, some Republicans began talking of him as a candidate for president or vice president. The politically astute manager of the Western Associated Press, William Henry Smith, predicted that the GOP ticket would be Hayes and Wheeler. Upon hearing this forecast, Ohio Governor Rutherford B. Hayes wrote to his wife, I am ashamed to say, who is Wheeler? Because Wheeler had served in the House from 1861 to 1863, and again, from 1869 to 1877, while Hayes had been a representative during the intervening years from 1865 to 1867. There had been no overlap in their service. So just some uh, more uh, facts about Wheeler and his early life. Um, you've probably, of course, never heard of William Wheeler, but he was a politician of high moral character, uh, of course, he became the 19th vice president, as we know. Uh, William Allman Wheeler was born on July 30th of 1819 in Malone, New York, a town near the border uh, with Canada. His father, Allman, died when William was eight. William scrimped and saved to be able to attend the University of Vermont, like his late father,
but cannot afford to continue after two years. He returned to Malone and studied law while teaching school, and in 1845 he was admitted to the bar and began his political career as a member of the Whig Party, attaining the positions of town clerk, school commissioner, and school inspector. Uh, Wheeler was the district attorney for his native Franklin County from 1846 to 1849, and in 1850 was elected to the New York State Assembly, where he served for two years. In 1858, he was elected to the State Senate as a member of the New Republican Party. In 1860, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives from District 16 of New York, serving from 1861 until 1863. He then returned to New York, chairing the State Constitutional Convention. In 1868, he was elected to the House again, the first of four consecutive terms that served from 1869 till 1877. Uh, his very, very brutal honesty during his later stint, latter stint, I should say, in Congress, Wheeler chaired the Pacific Railroads Committee and the Credit Mobier scandal broke. Several high-ranking members of Congress were given stocks in Credit Mobier, the construction company for the Union Pacific Railroad, by a representative from Ohio as a type of a bribe, but Wheeler turned down the stocks and then resigned his position as chair so he would not be approached again. Um, in 1873, Congress voted themselves a pay raise that was retroactive for five years in what was known as the Salary Grab Act. Not only did William Wheeler vote against it, he voted against this act uh, but he refused to accept it, uh, sending the increased portion back to the U.S. Treasury. Uh, pretty crazy. Uh, very, very honest man. Uh, I told you he attended Franklin Academy. Uh, monetary concerns forced him to drop out of University of Vermont without graduating. Wheeler received the honorary degree of Master of Arts from Dartmouth College in 1865. And... LLD from the University of Vermont in 1867 and Union College in 1877. In 1876, he received his Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Vermont as in course, making him a graduate of the class of 1842. In 1845, he married Mary King. Uh, we know that. He studied law with Asa Haskell, a Malone attorney and politician who served as town supervisor, justice of the peace, district attorney, and a member of the New York State Assembly. Wheeler was admitted to the bar in 1845, and he practiced in Malone, New York. Told you about what he did, uh, about Congress, his state assembly time. Um, during his house tenure, Wheeler served as chairman of the Committee on Pacific Railroads and the Committee on Commerce. Wheeler's reputation for honesty was celebrated, I told you guys this, by Alan Nevins in his introduction to John F. Kennedy's Profiles and Courage. Roscoe Conkling, a senator and New York State political boss, once offered, Wheeler, if you will act with us, there is nothing in the gift of the state of New York to which you may not reasonably aspire. Wheeler declined with, Mr. Conkling, there is nothing in the gift of the state of New York which will compensate me for the forfeiture of my self-respect. Uh, Wheeler served as president of New York's Northern Railroad. He was also president of the New York State Constitutional Convention. His acceptance speech after being chosen as president gave a ringing endorsement for racial equality. This was uh, as president um, of the Constitutional Convention of New York State. His uh, speech, his acceptance speech, this is a quote from it. We owe it to the cause of universal civil liberty. We owe it to the struggling liberalism of the old world that every man within New York of whatever race or color or however poor, helpless, or lowly he may be in virtue of his manhood is entitled to the full employment of every right appertaining to to the most exalted citizenship. When Congress voted a pay raise in 1873, the uh, Salary Grab Act, Wheeler not only voted against it, but after it passed, he returned the salary to the Treasury Department, and Wheeler was responsible for the so-called Wheeler Compromise, 
of 1875, which settled a volatile political situation in Louisiana, but eventually led to the withdrawal of federal troops and the end of Reconstruction. He was a very, very morally sound person. Um, he was very ahead of his time when it came to civil rights. Uh, he was a civil rights uh, activist when it came to everybody should have equal rights, no matter your race, color, your uh, financial status. It did not matter to William Wheeler. Uh, he was all about equal rights and civil rights. Um, interesting stuff, for sure. Very interesting stuff. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys, as far as part one goes for William Wheeler. Now, I will tell you this. Malone, New York is literally, as Henry and I said in the introduction, it is so far up to upstate New York um, that you're practically in Canada. I mean, that is not an exaggeration in the slightest bit. As a matter of fact, when I said uh, in the introduction that there was a sign, um, you know, Montreal, uh, Quebec, Canada uh, was not far. Um, I said 30 miles. It's actually like 60, 65 or so miles. But the point is, it's only like an hour or so away. Uh, that's how close to Montreal you are when you're up in uh, uh, Malone. And as far as the Canadian border goes, um, I mean, you're literally, and I'm not exaggerating in the slightest bit, you are only about 15 to 20 miles from the United States-Canadian border when you're in Malone, New York. That is how far north in upstate New York Malone, New York is. Now, there is a small museum there that does have some William Wheeler artifacts. I did not get to see any of that. Uh, there is also a house there that William Wheeler lived in, and there is a sign outside of the house, like a roadside sign. Um, but the house is now, I believe it's actually an Elks Lodge for the local Elks uh, group. Uh, I think they meet there. I think it's an Elks Lodge. So I will show you that sign and stuff. That I'll show you that stuff in part two. Uh, maybe there's a picture now I'm showing on the screen right now, but, uh, I'll show you more signs and more angles of that. I did not take any of these pictures. These are stock photos that I found online. Um, I did visit his gravesite, of course, which you will see in part two, but as far as bonus footage, the reason I'm telling you all this, as far as bonus footage goes, um, yeah, there's not really going to be much when it comes to William Wheeler, except for my, you know, my gravesite pictures at the end of part two. Because there's not much to show you when it comes to William Wheeler. Plus, uh, it would literally be about a 15 to 16 hour round trip car ride for me to go to Malone, New York from my house. It's literally like 7 to 8 hours one way. So, I'm not really going to be able to do that. Uh, just to show you pictures of a house, <laughs> unfortunately. But, um, you know, just wanted to give you guys a forewarning. So... Uh, so there you go. William A. Wheeler, 19th Vice President of the United States. That's his early life uh, and his rise in the political ranks. Tomorrow for part two, we're going to get into, of course, his candidacy for vice president, his the, the controversial crazy election of 1876. We're going to get into that. And then, of course, his vice presidency, his legacy, and his death. We're going to get into all that tomorrow for part two. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for everything you do. You guys are wonderful. And I am so happy to be back. Really excited to keep moving forward with this Vice Presidential Series. And we will see you tomorrow for part two. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye now.